Hey folks, and welcome to Let's Talk. This is my show where I sit down with subject matter experts and or people well-versed in a certain topic in tabletop and we editorialize, give our opinions, and generally discuss the comings, goings, and current hot news. Now this isn't necessarily as G-rated as the rest of GMG, so uh, viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. I am here with Chris. Hey! One of my oldest gaming buddies um, to talk about, we're doing a follow-up episode to Marketing Hype Trains. Um, <laughs> this was a, an opportune time, basically. We, we've we both been getting emails from Warhammer Community all week saying, tune in for the Nova Open Big Reveal. It's going to be mind-shattering new exciting things. Everybody getting something. Everybody's getting something. It's going to be super exciting. And like... Leading up to that too, there's been preview trailers for the bone. What did you call the boner mancers? Boner mancers, yeah. <laughs> the, the bone tie, I think they're called. Uh, the bone space marines. Yeah. And, um, the uh, bone cast now because they're <laughs> the essentially bone, they're, they're bone they're, cast bone turtles. They're storm cast. They're just not gold. They're bone they're, colored. They're made from bones. Um, and then uh, we've also been getting previews from other companies too, like. Uh, more renders from um, CB for Infinity, and just little things like the teasers that were at Lock and Load uh, for things like what we call it. We called it Warcaster Five Thousand for whatever the whatever the new like Warcaster <laughs> in space thing is going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was it was a good time basically this weekend after all those previews and stuff went out to do a follow up on on Hype Trains because that was a, an episode you guys actually really enjoyed uh, just from the feedback from the, the viewers we got, and it's on everyone's minds again in a big way. Uh, and and what I really wanted to talk to you about because you've been I mean you've been in this as long as I have longer actually um, is about how that impacts you as a hobbyist when this stuff starts to happen because you get you you, you get. I don't mean you as in you, I mean you as in general. You get swept up basically sometimes in these sort of like exciting things. But then when they come out, for me at least, if I've been hearing about it for so long, I'm not. I'm actually well, less excited if, when it if, comes out if, than if, I was if, when it was being marketed to me. There, are, there, there, are, there are people out there in this world who remember what the world like was like before there was an internet. Um, and we were two of those people. And, <laughs> and what Games Workshop was like before there was an internet. Uh, and then what Games Workshop was like before they acknowledged the internet was a thing. Um, but, I mean, it used to be that uh, to see a new GW product, I'm using GW as the example because they're sort of the, the marketing masters right now, uh, and they've changed the way that they market, obviously, with new technologies and new ways to communicate to people. Uh, but it used to be that uh, Games Workshop would show off new models in a magazine called White Dwarf. I'm sure we've all heard of that. And that was your first time you got to see what was coming out that month um or it was out like that same out too it usually just, it was generally like yeah in but that sometimes days. they would um i mean i remember warhammer 40k second edition uh cracking open that uh codex imperialis book and there are models in there that i've never seen before these squats that yeah, yeah. we never got to see we never got the That's squats right. That's just or there'd squats. be rules for things and we'd be like, man, I can't wait to see what these electro priests are like. And it only took them thirty years to get the electro priests <laughs> done, right? But we're all like, this is so. There's rules, and that's a whole other thing. Is why GW stopped doing rules that they didn't make models for. Um, but to sort of stay on on the topic of the hype, it's like uh, you would get excited cracking open that White Dwarf magazine. I can remember back in the '90s getting a White Dwarf magazine and knowing that. You know, reading through that those pages and getting hyped for what's happening that month, that was my what I now do every day when I open up my news feed on my on my phone, right? Yeah. And it's just it's like this constant barrage of products. But it's and, all tomorrow products. Yeah, and it and, and then they come and they go and it's like, okay, well now we're now what, three weeks into Warcry? Yep. And that hype about train is sort of we waning, haven't, we haven't but, heard a lot of new stuff about Warcry. Well, well sorry, they, we announced, we got, they announced yeah, some new book, stuff on the, the, on the when yeah. we get into the, the to the Nova stuff. Yeah. But it's it, it's like these peaks and valleys, and it's always building to the next thing. But then it's like, um, as a hobbyist who wants to sort of engage in all these things, uh, it's hard to keep up. You know? So for me, it feels <laughs> like I never really get to sink my teeth into the thing I'm working on mm -hmm. for long enough to really absorb it. Like, I've played a lot of Warcry so far. I'm, I'm 12 yeah. games into um, my various factions. We did the first, like, five with... Or the first six, actually, with the um, Untamed Beasts and the Iron Golems from the box set. And now I'm at my Convergences for, like, my other three. So I have um, my Deep Deepkin, my Stormcast Trials, my Night Haunts. And 
that's that's giving me a really good like fan. I've gotten to play against a bunch of other factions too. I played against your um this week. You guys won't actually see it until like November because we're so far filmed out. But I got to play against your Cypher Lords this week, which was cool because I hadn't played against them yet. Um, I played against Iron Jaws now. I played against um, Owen and his Gloom, uh, Gloom Spike Gits. And that's one game because it's fast enough and I can play enough games of it. I feel like I've actually gotten to enjoy. Yeah. But when, um, for instance, Titanicus came out, I I was on to the next thing almost immediately. I didn't really yeah, play Titanicus and, again until like I a mean, year. I can remember back back in the day, uh, you know, my friends and I would get together and we'd play Necromunda campaign, and we'd play that campaign for six months. Yeah. We would play nothing but Necromunda for six months. We might play the odd game of 40k or fantasy battle in there, but that but our core focus was building Necromunda terrain. Yeah. Painting our gangs, adding to our gangs, uh, hired guns, and playing a, playing a giant, right. evolving Memorable narrative. Campaign. Right. Whereas uh, the new well, Necromunda the came is, out. The focus was on that, too, from the yeah. company. The company would release nothing but. Like, they'd have odd other things, but they, they'd, they'd do Necromunda calls every month you know, yeah. for those six months. I mean, you, you can remember you know, when, when it was six months between a codexes. Yeah. Uh, you know, GW would do two codexes a year, uh, two or three, you know. Um, and 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 you wouldn't get all the models out for that. You know, you'd get the codex would come out. There'd be a few models upon release day, and then hey, when are you going to get those Thunderwolf cavalry? Uh, well, they save releases for that <laughs> six month period, and there'd be like a it would it almost so so what it feels like right now is there's these huge spikes in sort of like in in focus for things, whereas before there was like a slow kind of like like lead out. So like, instead of focusing on like twelve things, we're focusing on three maybe or four core things. And they blend into each other every three months. Like a quarter, you'd have like a codex release, and the rest of the release of that codex would bleed out. But then, as the end of that release was happening, the next one would start. Yeah. And you kind of got to like engage with what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, we just got um, the Space Marine Codex, and before that, the Shadow Spear box. And I painted all my Vanguard stuff for my Space Wolves, but I haven't really had. There's been so much other stuff coming out. I haven't really had time to catch up and play games with my Space. But that Shadow Spear box was now is now. Spring. It's older than that. No, it? it came out in March. Did it? Okay. Yeah, it was like early, early this, early this spring. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it was this year. It was, but I mean, that, that, that's Q1. six months ago, right? Like it came. That's out. true. It's, it's the end of August right it's, now. So. so, so between that and then you've got six months of, you know, that and then the new Marine Codex. But how many codexes do we have in between there? Oh, jeez, right? like a, like a bunch <laughs> and a bunch yeah, of like or, and, and a bunch and, of and, and, and a bunch the, of like other and, stuff and too. so and that's sort of like 40k at that point was slowed down. Mm -hmm. They basically released Shadow Spear, then they went and did AOS for you know a bit, and then they do all these little side games. And it's like Games Workshop is pushing product out at a rate that um, is unbelievable. If you are an old time hobbyist and you remember what the release was sort of like in the 90s. Um, or even the early two thousands. Yeah. Um, well, it's just technology's changed. They can make and it's just faster. yeah. They can just they can put. But it's they're they're not just pumping out new codexes because obviously that codex cycle that served them for twenty years, they sort of had to adapt and now they're they're releasing board games. They're right. essentially releasing, you know, these like self contained, uh, hit it and quit it sort of for Aeronaut and Perialis, mm -hmm. and that is literally a board game. Mm -hmm. So so the original version of that game, which you can see if you want to go back through my. Um, my Throwback Thursday stuff. I did a Throwback Thursday on Aeronautica. It was a little more historical war war plane oriented, right? You had like elevation, you had your speed, and you played on a normal like epic scale, you know, I mean six mil or eight mil um, uh, table, and you moved around with tape measures and stuff. And now it's a hex grid with battle maps, um, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it does allow them to make a product that. And we, if you go back and listen to our podcast about kitchen ki table games, that you can play at a kitchen table. Mm -hmm. It's a self-contained product. Actually, you and I were playing Warcry today. We're just talking about how having a nice self-contained product where everything you need to play in the yeah. box is Yeah, and that's nice. just it. It's like you get all the tokens, you get all the dice, you have the board, you have the terrain. If you just bought the Warcry box and played with the two war bands in the box, it's a self-contained game. Yeah. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's a finished experience. And, that's, and, and so for, you know, even though they've added on... Uh, you know, there's four other core gangs, and then there's, you know, uh, two coming, two more there's coming. nine more of the uh, of of AOS the, of the AOS yeah. war bands. Um, so it's 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 an expanded experience, but at the same time, the core experience is you can play it, and then you can just be done with it. And, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's, I feel it's like, like like I said, you know, we used to play Necromunda. We'd play Necromunda for six months. Uh, recently, my gaming group and I we played Necromunda. 
uh, back in January, we started a campaign. We had that campaign wrapped up in two weeks. Like we, 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 we powered through and we played a lot of games. But at that point, we were all like, okay, well, we're done with this. What's, what are we doing now? Okay, well, we're going to play some Path to Glory because we love Path to Glory and Age of Sigmar. Um, and then we started playing Kill Team. And it's just like, it, it, and then we were, now we're looking at uh, Reality's Edge as sort of right. our next thing that we're going to, that we're going to try out. What because kicks we're off all, that interest? We're all like, looking for the, well, is it is it the, I, I have is it the a, I have a I have a problem myself with right. with losing interest in a product once I sort of have it and have painted it because I'm really a painter hobbyist first like I like right. my hobby is thinking about my hobby yep. you know um, the, me the matter the game outside so the game. yeah so like I, I like to build my models I like to look at them I like to put them in like they're like parade dress um, and then paint them and then uh, by the time I get them onto the table to play a game with them. I've kind of lost interest. I'm kind of on to the next thing. Uh, to me, to me, actually, it's <laughs> it's actually the putting them down on the table and, and having everything right that yeah. is like my most satisfying yeah. the hobby. And playing and the game is about... fun, and like, I, but again, to me, the, the game is like a social input, right? It's you, it's you and me getting to hang out and spend time together. And so, but the, but the the big part of my hobby is like we just described. It's the lead up to. Mm -hmm. like I remember when you and I played Confrontation, and we spent ages building that table, yeah, that one by one table that we made. Um, and for you guys listening, this was, oh, geez, like 2002, 2003, probably. And we'd, we would, yeah. like, go to hobby shops and, like, search for the right pieces. Yeah, and, and made... that was the other thing was that there was, um, you know, uh, what's what's the phrase? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Right. Whereas, you know, we didn't have hobby shops. We didn't have uh, internet hobby shops like we have today where you can order these things. We're, we're going around to railroad train stores and scrounging trees. Uh, yeah. And a friend of ours just happened to have the old Forge World earthworks. That's right. Yeah, we built the, it. Uh, so, we, so, yeah. We, so we built a, a two by two tile with the earthworks. Yep, and it was a that. four by four modular table that could actually probably be about six by four. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine still has it. No way, right. it, it ended up somewhere because I gave it to Nico. Uh, Tyler friend, friend, has it? Yeah, so it That's ended up awesome. with Nico and then it went to Tyler, uh, who's got it now. So it's still somewhere. Uh, yeah. It was a nice fall table. And yeah, we. But we would, really dug into that. Like, we yeah. didn't jump into the next thing. And there was less on it. Well, offer there was back probably a, a two year period where yeah. we played. Almost confrontation exclusively yeah, because true. it was because it was such a different experience to us because yeah. a it wasn't a Warhammer game. Yep, it was. It had this elegant system. It had this. Uh, it had these French models that were painted yeah. like you know like masterpieces, works of art. Uh, and again, it was it was we had to scrounge for this stuff. Yeah, you know, we're ordering from obscure websites in Europe to try <laughs> to and get, get the these miniatures. models because no your, one in North America is selling that's right, this your stuff. Your mom went to uh, was it my mom Super went to Star? France? Was, was it Star, was it Star it was called Star something? Star I don't know. Something? It, was, it was in Fr it was in Paris, and I just told her I said Star go, player, Star player. Yeah, I said, that's right. Go to this store and get me these. And models. here's the <laughs> list of the of the confrontation models. So my right. mom, who knows nothing about miniature games, is in this this hobby store in France trying to acquire models for me that. We couldn't just, get North just America. cannot get yeah. at and that it, point. And it's funny because when you think about that different time, we were able to sink our teeth into it because we mm -hmm. weren't being bombarded. Like this is pre Facebook, we weren't being bombarded by these new things. We're being offered something new every five mm -hmm. minutes, right? So we could really like like take time and sink our teeth into a project. And I think that's why I'm so I I do like the bite sized projects because. I get an echo of that feeling. Yeah. Like when we, because you did your Warcry thing, you you got all the stuff finished, you built and painted the terrain, and you sort of like completed the box set, and you do get a sense of satisfaction when you lay that mm -hmm. out. Because I remember you're just literally texting me pictures of like, hey man, I got it finished. Here's my here's my here's my terrain set. Here's yeah. all on the table. Like, and here's the great. box I went to Canadian Tire to right. buy to put my Warcry stuff so into. Portable. Yeah, exactly. So it's a portable. It's essentially a portable gaming experience, and the whole thing fits into one of my battle phone bags. Yep, absolutely. So. But but at the same time, we're going to play Warcry for probably, I don't know, six weeks or whatever, and then be excited about whatever. Yeah. You're, you're excited about your Manus Warriors right now. The I'm, Space I'm, Marine I'm, I'm doing you. a Space Marine chapter again, which, yeah. you know, it's funny because every 10 years or so, I tell myself I'm never going to play 40K again. <laughs> I'm never going to build another 40K army. Uh, and then a Space Marine Codex comes out. <laughs> And, and, and the last back. time around, I avoided it. Yeah, I bought models, but that was primaries. just because you know I bought the Dark Imperium box set, so I had miniatures, um, and I bought the the Shadow Spear box when it came out because I uh, everyone likes Space Marines. And know? they were cool new Space Marines. The Shadow Spear model, they, they weren't just more Space Marines. They were these cool Vanguard. And infiltrator. I used to have a Black Legion army back right. in Second Edition, That's so right. obviously I'm like, well, I'll just do Black Legion. So I actually bought it for the Chaos models. Right. With the excuse that, well, because someone was like, well, do you want to split the box? I'm like, no, no I like, I I like miniatures. Everything. It's all for me. <laughs> um, 
So maybe I'll do a Black Legion army, but I mean, I have a Red Corsair army that that was supposed to be my last army ever. I declared <laughs> uh, when I was making that. I remember because, that. Because, because remember that. That, that Red Corsair army just came out of a bits box. It did, yeah, yeah. It was just, I have Space Marines and I have a giant bin of Space Marine bits. And, and I was going to see what kind of model I can, yeah. what kind of army I can build. And I built a Red Corsair That's army. That's right. And you used the Space Marine Codex for it too. I remember your Ironclads. You had that awesome, like, Triclops Ironclad with, like, the big, like, uh, yeah. big, like, crazy, like, triple I and stuff. They were, it was a beautiful iron. It's a beautiful yeah. army. And you it, don't get finished. Did you ever paint that cast I gave you? It's it's in painted, somewhere? and then it was violently disassembled at one point <laughs> uh, when I was moving. It's funny right. because we moved uh, apartments, and uh, it survived the move. Right. And then uh, I was picking the box up to take it down to the storage locker. That's funny. And like a, so I was picking a different box up, and I passed over top of the box with the Titan in it. Yeah. And then the box slipped out of my hand hands. And landed on top of the Titan. That's funny because that happened actually to my entire box of last day's train. But nothing broke. The, game. <laughs> the resin didn't break. It was just all my glue joins. Just like, like shattered. It, yeah. it collapsed the legs yeah, on itself, yeah. which, uh, so I just sort of closed up the box and shed it a tear and put it away and said, <laughs> yeah. someday, 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 someday we'll unearth you. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll, we'll you reassemble you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's get on to Nova then because we've kind of talked about our own experiences now mm -hmm. with um the impact that has on you being constantly offered new things and you had it on your phone you pulled it up mm -hmm. there was a ton of stuff like if you're basically if you're a games workshop hobbyist they have saved up and now kind of given teasers and hints to like but almost they every do this day. every month now because every time there's a big event, a big event somewhere yeah. in the I, world over the summer it typically they're, happens they're, yeah. they're dumping you know these little tidbits and there's these little promises, and then they do these little promo videos. Right. Um, like, let's talk about let's talk about the the boner mancers. Boner mancers, because I feel like we got um, a quarter here. This looks like it's next because they don't give any timelines. We have like a quarter worth of stuff to release here. So there's something for AOS, which is the the tie, the bone mm -hmm. tie. There's something for 40k, which is the sisters. Which they've been they've been they've been they've been doing a teaser for the sisters basically since. Eighth edition started. Yeah, well, I mean, like I think that, that was when they that started. People want sure. plastic sisters, and people want plastic sisters for a decade now. Yeah. I remember when the uh, the what's the name of their tank? The, the, the repulsor. The, the repenter. The repen no. whatever. Uh, whatever the rhino is had a plastic sister in it, and we were all super excited because that was the first plastic right, sister. The, gunner, the gunner's head. And stuff, yeah, the yeah. gunner, the little gunner that sat inside. It was the first plastic sister. It's the recl the re oh. re redemptor reclaimer. Oh, no, I know it. It's in the tip of my tongue. The repulsor is the, the space brain tank. Do, doesn't matter. It does doesn't matter. matter. The people are going to be screaming at the TV right now. Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> so if you know, comment immolator. down below. Immolator. Immolator. The immolator. 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 It's the immolator. Um, so, but what, what they've kind of done with, with these um, bone they, guys yeah. uh, is they, they released a little teaser video. And it's funny because they actually released the ogre model first. Yes, and in the true. ogre yeah, model's yeah. teaser video, he makes mention of no longer wanting to pay this bone tithe or whatever, or not, or this deal is over. So, um, and then they started release. So there was four videos, and the fourth one was last night with the release of all the models. Right. And uh, so, what'd you oh. think of the boner mancers? <laughs> well, I know what you think. <laughs> I think that. I, they have an interesting aesthetic. They they kind of remind me of um, the uh, the Nauticans from Mantic's Kings of War. They have this like weird exoskeleton thing. And I get what they're going they're for. They're definitely unique. Yeah, I get what they're and going they're, for. And what I like is that they're not. They're clearly not derivative of anything that they've done before. So they're not Tomb Kings, although... They're kind of Tomb You could kind of say that they're Necrons. <laughs> yeah. Not in space, because spa Necrons were space undead. Right. And now these guys are fantasy Necrons. So is this just the circle complete? I guess. This so is they're just... like a weird constructy <laughs> thing, yeah. I mean, I'm not... I'm, I'm more interested in their story than I am really in the miniatures. The miniatures are cool. But what the, 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 the story is going to be is that they're, they're undead guys and they collect souls and they put these souls into bodies that they make out of bone. Yes. And they're bone unlike, cast. unlike... They're bone cast. And unlike <laughs> storm cast, these guys are all great. Oh, wait, they are all great heroes. So they are just like Stormcast, but there's multiple souls in a body. So they're kind of like Eldar aspect warriors in that way. It is kind of that logical conclusion. They're more so do actually... They, so, do they have bone singers? Who I makes these bone guess. armor? Yes. I who mean, makes, I... Who makes the bone constructs? The MacGuffin does. 
the MacGuffin. <laughs> the MacGuffin Do they just have a bunch of little like artificers? Whatever, whatever the MacGuffin is. I mean, we don't away, we don't know yet. I mean, we can theorize. We don't know. Chipping away at bone. It, to me, they they do seem like a mix of the logical conclusion of like the like the what is it the um the armor that the Aspects Exarch wears. Yeah, well, like it, remem- like it remembers like every, everything. Every time that, you put a soul into it, yeah. the the soul that was in it there stays around, and they develop these new personalities based on that. So it's like. Uh, it's it's basically an exarch. An exarch. They're all exarchs. So they've sort of taken that bit of or the wraith trope from the Eldar from, from, yeah, 40K from the Eldar. I don't hate the models. Some no, of the models I definitely don't like. The I big re- guy, the big four armed guys, I don't like. Yeah, they look like um, weird tiered warriors in a way. They, they have might, this they very like, grievous. They have a general grievous thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do. I do like the catapult though. With it's weird arms. I like and the legs. catapult. The 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 diorama that is clearly the leader of the army. Right. I think is really cool. Yeah. Um. I love this style. I love the sort of um, oriental inspiration. But again, it doesn't feel like anything drawn from this world, which is what yeah. which is what Warhammer fantasy battle had Did. a problem with well, was I mean, that it drew everything from 15th century Europe exactly right? and the original Warhammer <laughs> fantasy battle literally had like men of the west yeah. men of the orient men of the north like it was yeah. the whole idea was that it was it was basically and the like empire was basically historical Europe, production yep. you know uh, it was uh, uh, renaissance Europe. early renaissance yeah, yeah. and so, so I, I think that they definitely succeeded in creating something that is very Warhammer mm-hmm. um, but at the same time it, it is familiar familiar enough I guess to other armies that I I mean it it does you, you can't say it doesn't have a screaming skull catapult. So you, know, so you can't say it doesn't do you, have. Do you, a, do you think that what we saw last night is the whole is the whole army book? I don't know. I it's, I think it's it interesting. Is. I I think it might be, but I think the kits might make two things. If we look at the Agnath as a template, because that was the last time that a range was done from scratch as a book, and it's not the best example because it doesn't have endless. Because there are like three that. units. There's the right. cavalry. The infantry guys on foot, yep. and then the big four armed the guys. guys yep. Then there's a war machine in the catapult. Yep. Then there's what looks like a character with a scythe who's probably a necromancer or probably like your support yeah. caster. And then there's your main guy. There you might sh- be a few other character models here and there. Yeah. But I think I think those three core units, I think that's the army. I think we're we're lacking a behemoth, which every army is gonna have. We have a catapult. And there should be that's that's a war machine. It's you have the leader, machine. you who's on a giant he's base because he's because he's be got behemoth. four models on there nah, with him. You won't be behemoth. I won't be behemoth. That's not big enough. The, dude, I thought a math one's not a behemoth. No. Uh, yeah, like the, the, the miniature size doesn't denote behemoth anymore. Army roll denotes behemoth. I think <laughs> we're gonna see a behemoth. I hope it's some kind of weird bone scaraby thing. I think it's gonna be. There's a lot of scarab iconography on them, so I'm getting. I'm but not betting really. It's gonna be, like it's, all the shields have like weird scaraby like it's, shapey it's, things. It's the shape, but it's not. Like there's nothing about these that says Egyptian, except no. for except for the way that it's sort of, I don't know. It's it's they have headdresses. It, it's and, a very and scarabs, unique. Man. They're like Stargate design. They're Stargatey. I'm sorry, they're Stargatey. They they they're gonna have some kind of. They're gonna, we're missing a behemoth, and the reason I know that we're missing at least three characters is that the size of the tool. Well, if you're watching the, the video, there's a few things in the video that show. Well, you can do four characters in a single mold. So if they've cut a single mold to do characters for this army, and they, they would from a production point of view, you can, and they've made it so you can block them off. Mm-hmm. There's typically spots for four models. Yeah. So you'll have one mold will be that big guy, and then you'll have four support characters and a behemoth. And I think that's what we're going to see that's left. You'll see four support characters and a behemoth. The kits might make two things. I'm betting the cavalry at least makes two things, because um, the cavalry typically do, like the Morsar guard, the Ishlan guard. They might, the, they, they might be guys with like bows, cause, yeah, because they have that like sort a of like that thing, step maybe. warrior. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Thing, they, the very kind of Mongol, Khanish sort yeah, of thing. There, there could be a whole bunch of different ways of like of building those guys, and I think that would be mm-hmm. a, um, a, uh, a, a a like a legitimate army start at that point. Because I think that's what we're looking at here is we're st- looking at the same thing with the Ideth where they're starting an army kind of from scratch. And you'll see that like I, I don't think they're gonna hold all the kits back because if this doesn't come out until November, right? Because if this is a quarter is that what release, I don't remember. We don't know. Yeah. We, we will have no idea. They haven't said that. I don't well, think I know that a lot of the other stuff they said pre orders start blah 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 soon like, um do they say specific ones uh for those guys i think i think it's november is it november yeah i think a lot of this is november well they'll, stuff. they'll have held some stuff back then i think to show us just to do another push of like videos or whatever mm-hmm. and that's to me that's a th- there is a thing with doing these big waves of like previews that always uh i would find concerning if i was if i was the one doing these previews is i don't want to give too much away up front because people make up their minds if they're gonna buy something or not very quickly and the let if they're available right away, they they might just pull the trigger and buy it. You know well, what I mean? Whereas I mean, if if they show it too much down the future, 
when these things come out, there's going to be previews happening for things happening in three months again. Well, that's just it. Is people that, are going is to be when, when is Warhammer Day, and then games, or I guess game Warhammer Day is now game. What game day games was? Day, yeah. But War, then they Warhammer also Fest, have Black yeah. Library Day, and they have Forge World Open Day, and then and that's just stuff at the studio. That's just stuff in yeah. Warhammer World. You know, there's events that they go to. So there's always something else, right? There's, and it's like the by the time preview, by the time we get to so like with Warcry. Um, we saw the Warcry models back in like almost last year. I want to say like they started they started showing off a few there was like, bits and pieces. The, we didn't know what it was. Yeah, it was, was just stuff. Yeah. it was just here are some some models. Pictures of the box set or whatever. And it's the same thing with the black with the um, the Blackstone Fortress stuff. Right. Uh, and the new see, characters for Blackstone they Fortress. They were in uh, they were in combat arena. So yeah. So, the but they showed off then. the combat arena and they yep. showed off the models ages ago yep, that's true that so was by the year. time it comes to release date is the hype still there because it used to be yeah absolutely. and i mean yeah. going let's go back in the day uh to when you know everyone remembers war seer and mm -hmm. before that it was called portent portent and that's there were portent. and there were guys Port on there that were uh potentially possibly company plants who well, they're just hand in world. or they're just got, well. This is before Warhammer World existed, or they just no, it's not. they no, just it's knew forever. people who worked for Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Um, and they would, you know, everyone wants to be sort of that that rumor guy, right? And they would, you know, you'd get the rumors coming it was, out. It was back and there when guys were just to make up early. stuff. And I'm not back, saying, I'm not saying everyone, everyone on the internet made up stuff about what's possibly coming out. <laughs> in the late but 90s, I may have written an entire High Elf Army book that I put on the internet as. Uh, a potential sixth edition High Elf Army book. Yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah, that yeah, was good times. I just make it good shit times. up. I, I, just felt, I was bored one day at work, so <laughs> I'll just write a High Elf Army book and sit, you know, throw it up on the internet and say, "Look what just got see leaked." See what people see. And people, people bit. <laughs> and true. then I got, I got, uh, I got my little troll, trollish jollies off for five minutes, and I was on to something else because. Uh, I have a life. You're the best type of man ever. Seen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, it, it, it's funny though because I don't, I don't know how excited I'll be about. The bone tithe coming out when there's there's going to be a bunch of push for whatever the next exciting thing is. It it's t it, that's the interesting thing for me doing these big spoilers is it, I looked at that whole list of things and because I knew I couldn't have it and because it was coming out in six months I tried to stay excited more about the thing that I was currently excited about which is Aeronautica because mm -hmm. I was a big Aeronautica fan and it comes yeah. out next week when you're watching this the pre-orders are this week. I, I I was actually happy that I didn't like the bone tithe stuff. Because it means that I can concentrate Back on a project things. that I'm doing. Because in, in, what happens to me a lot is that I'll be working on something. And that's why I don't like big projects. That's why I like Warcry. Right. Because it's like, Bite I can size. finish a warband in a, in a week, um, you know, paint some terrain, play some games. Uh, and then if that's something that I want to keep doing, then I'll keep doing it. And I think with Warcry, it's one of those games where the gameplay is quick and fast and fun enough Snappy. and silly things happen because it has a random mission generator which creates these very atypical situations sometimes and i like that i don't like uh i'm the old days of lining up six inches onto the table and, and fighting against each other yeah. uh, i'm bored of that so i like things that, yeah. are, that keep me engaged that way but if i knew that if these bone tithe models came out and they were incredibly amazing and they just sort of tickled that thing in my brain that that makes me go, okay, well, that's my next thing. You'd obsess then over them. I lose focus, right? And I feel like one thing that, you know, all my friends have the same problem, and a lot of people that are in this hobby, especially people that have been in the hobby as long as, as me and, and sort of you and, your, and, and our group of people that play are, is that you can lose focus. Yeah, you get, you get one squad to a space program and you stop. Yeah. Right? You convert that one squad, you put and them the up, and then we just, have like, stall the income out. to support that. Yeah, it's, it's true. like, okay, well, it, you know, we're adults, we're grown right. ass people. Our, our fun <laughs> money is our fun money, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like if I want to start a new Space Marine army, I, I can start a new Space Marine army. I don't yeah. necessarily have to. You know, I'm not I'm not a kid saving up my allowance to buy a box of tactical marines I think, anymore. I think my most disappointed that I usually am with a game or a project is when I don't finish it. When I do stuff. And that's out. just it, is that is that is I and I and I have a lot of you know, I have an entire storage locker of regrets yeah. of fun, <laughs> right. of either finished projects, which we'll probably never see the light of day again, because I have lots of armies that are just well, never going to come play. The game died. Well, yeah. I mean I have like, I have how many I griffins have, do you have in storage? Well, <laughs> I have twelve thousand points of painted orcs and goblins right, orcs for and goblins. warhammer that are all on square bases that yeah. i will never rebase it's an army that goes back to fourth edition uh some of the models are even predate that but fourth edition was when i started playing warhammer we fantasy we should do some third fourth edition games and and point. it's just, like just and and, and i out. thought about well would i put them on round base to play age of sigmar with and a that's a lot of work 
and B, uh, that an army has a nostalgic... That kind of betrays what you did back then. To and that, so it sits in carrying cases in the basement, right. and it's... It's, it's, it's done. It's my ogres, my But dwarves. then on top of it will be, you know, the three or four, you know, armies that I started and never finished or never or, or lost focus on. Yep. And it just seems to me like that's getting, because of the release schedule of things and because of my, how much hobby time I have, because I'm a father like you. Yep. And it's like, how much free time do I actually have to work on something? And then Games Workshop sends something else out, and I go, oh, oh, oh I want that. So yeah. I see a plastic howling banshee, and I go, well, I'm glad I've got 20 metal, metal howling banshees. Yes, I don't right. need to buy that plastic howling banshee. <laughs> yeah, and I but... see Strike, and I go, I don't play Raven Guard, and I will never play Raven Guard, and I will never have hair like that. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> And then I see the bone, the bonermancers, and I'm like, okay, good. There's an AOS faction for undead because I've tried to do undead factions before, and I love the idea of doing an undead right. army. Uh, and I was gonna do. Uh, I, I love. You were the, really hoping it was uh, Krell. That was your. I thing. was. I was really, really hoping, hoping because it, because it, all the all the clues fit that it was Jaren Krell right, yeah. in a lot of ways. The only thing that didn't fit was the guy's accent because yeah. Jaren Krell was actually a Norseman, I believe. Um, <laughs> we're getting deep. We're yeah, getting deep but he was like he was like a famous. He was a northern, <laughs> yep. a northern guy, but he was an Empire general first, and yep. then he became a Chaos Warrior, and then he died, and then uh, Heinrich Kemmler raised him raised from the him dead, and then it was Krell and Kemmler roaming around the Empire, getting into shenanigans with each other with the Black Axe um, of Krell, which was the best yeah. light blade. Yeah, and it's still, <laughs> and it's funny because I use that the new Krell model. Right. Um, I have. Uh, Warcry Warband, and I have a Heinrich Kemmler, who's my Necromancer, right. and I have Krell, who's my Shenishel. That's perfect. So they're my yeah, Warcry Warband, yeah. which is, and he's got that that cursed blade, which is essentially right. the Black Axe. And the Black Axe. Krell. I've seen that Black Axe one shot a uh, a, 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 a brute, an orc boss, brute, brute boss. So <laughs> thirty five yeah. wounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just explode him. Yeah, that's so funny. Well, I mean, I, I think we are. We live in an age where there's never been more temptation to abandon a project, and that is one of the reasons. You go back to talking about kitchen table games and these bite-sized experiences and these like finished, almost like board game style things that I like these smaller projects because I know I'm going to get them done, and I feel yeah. a real a real sense of satisfaction in finishing a project. But I'm constant. Like right now, I, I just finished painting up this week. Um, in addition to the stuff I did for Aeronautica, the entirety of the current available options for riot quest but they're done it was 11 mm. miniatures i had a ton of fun painting them they're all like super characterful they're big chunky sculpts so, like they're fun to paint um they're relaxing to paint too because the detail isn't too small um and then immediately like i upon finishing completing painting those aeronautica showed up and yeah. i'm like i gotta get this done now and it, it just i jumped to the next thing but i wasn't upset about my riot quest experience because we're playing riot quest this week we played it last week um and i got done everything i needed to play so i at least i got past the finish line on that one before the next thing showed up but now it's the bite-sized things are are piling up too right like there's the, i've got um the expansion for um blackstone forge i gotta paint kind of sitting there in the background mm -hmm. being like if i don't do this soon if i don't finish painting obsidious malik soon and then start on these next ones i don't know when i'm gonna get to it because i know that there's gonna be something else new and exciting showing up even if it's just like the next wave of miniatures for Aristea or the next wave of miniatures for a rat quest or for monster apocalypse something else is going to jump the queue that i want to get yeah, done you do know that you're not like the typical hobbyist though like this is you've managed to sort of turn this into into a career i, I get it but at the same time <laughs> but at the same time those releases would exist if people were into kitchen table games because a lot of people yeah. play five little games instead of playing one or two big games and you can just you can still get derailed by just the amount of offerings being out there mm -hmm. Um, and I am excited about the next wave because they've shown all the new Aeronautica stuff. Too. Yeah, they've and I will this... say that, you know, like you and I are both come from that old school idea that you don't play with unpainted models. Well, no, that's, that, and that's that, not done. And that's one thing that, <laughs> you know, I can remember the first time I walked into a games workshop and I saw someone on the table with unpainted miniatures and I went, oh. What is even happening right now? What, what, <laughs> my world is upside, where, am I in the upside down? <laughs> where, who, who, who do I, who do I write a letter to about this? And then, and then I kind of realized, okay, well, you know, there's a kid. I'm and, gatekeeping. Let's yeah, remove like, this obstacle. Like whatever. Let's, yeah. you know, let's, let's play. But, but at the same time, paint your models, guys. <laughs> or just show and prove each week. Yeah. Show like, and prove you know, each week. I mean, it's not an excuse. I, I think I, there's, it, that was a, such a tricky decision for workshop because at, at the same time, they don't want to be gatekeepers to their own hobby yeah. and their own product line that they're selling. 
but then you still want to lift. You still want to lift. Why would you want to give anyone uh, a barrier to entry? Exactly. Right, in but, any way. And, and I think that the colored plastic they're doing now is a big. Oh, that's I hate just it. a big. Yeah, but there's a big move towards it right now for armies. Uh, but I would rather see. I just like it because I feel like I'm, it makes me use more primer than I should. <laughs> okay, but angry old men reasons aside, <laughs> I do. I do think there's an element of um, at least that raises up people that don't want to paint. I think it's perfectly acceptable if people don't want to paint in their hobby, but those that do that make excuses about it where it's like, ah, oh, I'll never be as good as you or I'll never be this or I'll never be that. I, mm -hmm. I do, I do think there's, there's that fine kind of like balancing. Well, there's, there's, like also, there's also, I mean, there's two sides to that. There's the guy who's just getting into the hobby, who's just figuring it out or who's just starting an army. And then there's the guys who are metagaming and are right. like, well, I don't paint this army because right now this is the current hot build on the internet and this is what's going to win me my tournaments. But so why would I paint weeks. this? And yeah. I guess that was the art boys whole thing that, happened years ago right. i don't know they, they I, I don't, I don't play competitively the uh, the last tournament i went to was in 2010 and it was <laughs> it was like a friendly tournament right it, um, was, uh, it was astronomicon yeah astronomicon, yeah that's right and so i don't i don't i don't run in those circles and i i actively avoid those circles <laughs> well it you're what you're looking for if the experience is different too but i think that that's again that's a I, there is there's an element of that through these concert releases and then the hyping up of stuff where yeah. if you think there's something better coming in six months, why would you invest the time and effort mm -hmm. into painting something? To well, I think that's done? one good thing that Games Workshop has done is that uh, they've sort of been forced into a situation where they release rules and they release models for those things. And there's nothing sitting out there in limbo that has rules that doesn't have models. Yeah, that's true. And they do that for business reasons, but I think it also... In, in ways, it sort of helps curtail the, the um, you wait know... Wait and see, wait and see, yeah. wait and see. Because it's like, well, I don't have to wait and see because there's models it's here. for it, It's right? ready. Yeah, it's ready. It's here in front oh, of I don't right have now. to buy some weird, like, Russian version Knock of it that some <laughs> guy... Resin cast version of it. Yeah, yeah, it's just ready to go. Chinese nope. gutter resin. And, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because, like, you, you're, you're at, a, you're at a, a stage now, I think, where if you get too distracted from a project, there is at least nine of the things that you could do in the meantime um or it's not even just distracted if you get too worn out by a project too you can go and try something else and dabble in something else in the meantime until you're ready to come back to it and be energized and they do never leave off anything for too long like it's, you don't have to wait very long to be excited about aos again because there's a new aos thing coming you yeah know, in three i months. mean i think i think that we've got what free cities yep. which was which was the last big I don't yeah, even know what I was event surprised. That was when was oh, that? Oh, jeez, but Gen that was Gen Con, I think. Was so Gen that Con? was so that was two weeks ago, three, three weeks, weeks ago, ago, something like that. Where yeah. they showed us uh, there's an orc book. <laughs> I'd coming actually out. forgotten about it, literally. And that's what I'm saying. So it's like <laughs> it's like it's like so. So we just had Gen Con. Now we've got Nova. Yeah. Um, and we've got stuff that was previewed at Gen Con that we still have no that hasn't seen the light of day. Yeah, and it's we true. Don't know when that's it's coming true. out. Um, but now we've got stuff at Nova that's sort of the same thing. So October, November is going to be crazy because gonna, cause all this stuff that we're seeing now is coming out in October, November. Yeah. So am I going to care in October, November? Do I care now? It's it's funny that I'd literally <laughs> forgotten about that because the Bone Tithe had like had like erased it from my my memory because well, it wasn't, wasn't available. Was the first yet. Bone Tithe video shown at Gen Con? I don't even remember. So we've had because we had three. There were three parts to this yeah, whole tie thing. That's true. And then the fourth one, which was last night, which was the big reveal. The big reveal, yeah. Right. And so to sort of go on to like a longer term one, I think they've been better off with the sisters. Where it's just like a tiny a, snap. And, yeah. and because a the sisters, they've shown us concept sketches. They've that's shown true. And, and all the, the way, fact all the way that, up. That, that we know what the sisters look like because we have twenty five year old metal models to yeah. go by, and they've said that they're going to keep them. In the same aesthetic, relatively basically. the same scale. Yeah. Obviously, there's a size creep in all Games Workshop models. If you don't believe me, kids, go look at your Space Marines. Um, <laughs> Put an RTB on one right yeah. next to a primary screen. Yeah. It's very um, you know, and I think that's just a way to sell more paint because it obviously requires more paint to paint these <laughs> is models. That your, is that that, your that's, tin that's, that's theory? the conspiracy theory. That's your tin hat theory. This is all is just a way to sell you ultramarine blue kids. Increasing paint. <laughs> that's right. I mean, think about how much more paint you need to paint a Primaris you Marine are, than I, you do need to paint a tactical. I want to do a, a full episode of this. It's just Chris's crazy conspiracy um, theories. This about is not Morgan conspiracy man. theory, man. This is just the truth. I, I think that the only reason that magic cards exist is to sell sleeves. <laughs> I mean, 
he could be right. That's the terrifying thing. Because you know what? Don't know what happens in boardrooms. It could, it could yeah, entirely be the. They're reason. just like, look, man, we've got all these plastic sleeves out there. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Make more card games. Or maybe it was the maybe it was the the bankers box people that were making the old hockey trading card boxes. They're yeah, like, yeah. we gotta come up with something to sell these yeah. boxes. The box sales are down. Listen, man, these these top loaders. We, we want people, you know, putting their really valuable cards into these uh, hermetically sealed top loading cases. How do we do that? I, hope I don't it's know. True. Make the cards worth something. I hope it's true. All right. Well, I got a piece of cardboard that's Ta- worth twenty five thousand. <laughs> dollars <laughs> who's gonna pay twenty five thousand dollars for it i don't know but that's what the internet tells me it's worth so i better put it in something that's gonna keep it safe <laughs> tell me tell me tell me about Chris it's all the petroleum and, people and just all that petroleum all, it all goes back to big petroleum it all goes back to gobble goes back to pencil that's why miniatures <laughs> are plastic and not metal hey tell me if you want if you want me to do an entire conspiracy theory episode of this show because i think it'd be fantastic you just do crazy conspiracy theories about the internet uh and uh, and wargaming and tabletop i think mm-hmm. it'd be fantastic uh, um, the lizards will shut you down, man. Uh, lizards will the lizards, the lizards will be in here with their segmented eyes, and <laughs> Pull their they'll just yeah. Off. <laughs> oh, man, they'll be like, is... "Look, man, we're taking you to the Hollow Earth. This is gonna turn the info yeah. warhammers. <laughs> info warhammers. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the doc. I have the documents." <laughs> Oh my god, we're gonna do a special episode called Info yeah. It's gonna be great. Um, so, so yeah, the I think the um, I think the, the there's definitely like a, a an impact that this is having on on my hobby, and I'm and I'm a pretty stable hobby. It's like I can stay on track because it's because this is my job. I have an incentive to stay on track on mm-hmm. projects and stuff. But even I feel that pull of like well, I, the I, marketing stuff. I I can stay on track to some extent too, uh, but I do. Like the, the the hype stuff for me because it's just because I've been doing it so long, so I know I know what I'm gonna how I'm gonna react right. before I even see it. Right? I know that I'm either gonna be totally apathetic to it or I'm gonna be like, okay, well that's my next army. Yeah, yeah. But you, if you that's happening every three weeks, it's you know, it's like well, it's like it's just, it's a gravity. <laughs> this is gravity pulling at you basically all the time to try new stuff. You know what I was most excited about actually. The thing I was the most excited about from that whole reveal, because what did we see? We saw we saw the new AOS faction. We saw sisters. We saw um, Shrike. Shrike. That's right for the Marines. We saw some Lord of the Rings stuff. Hey, you guys remember Lord of the Rings? We saw we saw some beautiful new Rohan houses. That actually, yeah. those Rohan houses were fantastic. And if I was going to be doing like a like a Middle Age, Dark Age oh, skirmish nice. game, I would have the some new of those Lord of the Rings houses. Stuff is so, so I look nice. at those houses and I go, mm, I play Saga. Right, like <laughs> it's such nice miniatures. Uh, was there a Necromunda thing? There was some bounty There was there was a a video. The Helmar stuff. That's right. It's, it's well, it's it's Spires, Dark maybe? Rising or something. So I think it's going to be like under like under Hive. So it's going to be whatever the new Scavies, Redemptionist, oh, whatever they do for the that. Outlander stuff. It'll be the Outlander. It, stuff, it's basically. Outlanders, right? But the way well, that they seem to do Necromunda and real bite sized things, they're not doing when they're releasing new Necromunda stuff. It's like one or two things. They do a whole book and they release one gang. Well, the Chaos right? Cultists are in that new expansion for Blackstone Fortress too, and it would make mm-hmm. sense if they just reused those oh, there you for, go. for Necromunda. So package them separately and yeah. sell them for Necromunda. Or don't package them separately and make people buy your Blackstone Fortress stuff because because I'll buy that just for the models. That's true. Like I, I have Blackstone Fortress. I've played Blackstone Fortress. Um, I don't want those models for Blackstone Fortress. Right. I want those models for a Chaos Cult army or something. Yeah, some, some, it, some skirmish thing. It's, it's like the whole reason I wanted the um, the Untamed Beasts from Warcry is for a Slaves to Darkness Age of Sigmar army that right. I have in my brain. In your brain. Right? It's a, pro- it's a have, slow simmering And by that, I, by, in my brain, I mean I've bought hundreds of dollars worth of models <laughs> and they're sitting in boxes waiting to be assembled or painted. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but the thing I was most excited about, so we saw that, we saw some, we saw literally something for everybody, I'm pretty sure there was some specialist stuff. I didn't see any horse heresy stuff though. But that's, I want to say that, there was no Titanica stuff. They'd no already Titanicus. shown the Aeronautica stuff because they'd shown that Aeronautica whole, like, is Titanica but not, well, it's the same scale but like, it's the same scale. I'd, I'd seen the, um, but like, it's orcs so it's not, it's not Imperial well, Flyers versus Chaos I Flyers. Think, I think it would be Fucking awesome if they did an orc argon. I, don't I know, think be the shit I think ever. that the first non-imperial army should for be should be orcs. Hundred percent because well, it, Ula, it, right? it would, even just the battle order. Yeah, and who wants to, you know? I mean, you know, you can do Eldar lead in a later date. Well, it's a huge. They could just do an Ulanor book. Right? Yeah, like because that the whole war for Ulanor would have had hundreds of titans. On the it the problem and, is and is, that, that, is that um, orcs need orc boys. So are you going to add infantry into the game? The, no. No. I don't, think they, I don't think they need orc boys, though, because the Stavimov's still cool as fuck. Like, yeah, you can still true. have Stavimov and just 
and just I mean people are going to do that they're going to you could you could do the them. vehicles you could do bubble chuckas right, and like exactly. and like the big like battle wagons and exactly. stuff exactly and you can, instead and you of just, knights you have battle or you I guess instead off, of knights you'd have stompas there, well there is a titan equivalent for everything yes. in 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 horse RC right yeah. now from and there's no tanks yet for no you would so you don't really need them. you just have gargants mech boy gargants and then great gargants right like you could have the mech boy gargants well as super weird guns you could have gargants and then great gargants and you could even do mega gargants if they bring out an imperial do a mega gargant because like why not because why not because on the it would they, they are the they are the ones that transfer easiest to the current rules for mm -hmm. for horse heresy too um because they still have power fields you know, they have collapsing bushes that don't come back but they have more of them they they use the same mechanics whereas like eldar with hollow fields like mm -hmm. there's more weird stuff in the other so, factions you have to deal with so the one thing i noticed about these reveals that we've been having sort of say like the last year or so uh no real shock and awe stuff though yeah, it's like, true. Like, were, were the were the bone tithe guys shock and awe? No. If, if the first we had ever seen of them, if they hadn't released these teaser videos leading yeah. up to it, and last night they were just like, oh, and by the way, blam, blam. there's a whole new faction. Here's how much higher would the hype be well, today? There's two arguments there though, because by doing the teaser videos, you got people to watch the Nova open, and you also sold tickets to Nova for those reveals. Yeah. The other thing we haven't talked about is the fact they gave away a miniature. They gave away the, a Canonus the model. They yeah. gave away a Canonus model, which is the first time they've done that with all these big like things. And that adds if any show they're going to, if you get if you get your ticket and you get into that studio, everybody somewhere, likes swag. Everybody likes swag. The, yeah. the value of them going to these shows has gone way up. But to short story long, it the thing I was most excited about was them coming back with all in one boxes. The Sisters of Battle box being an army plus a codex in the mm -hmm. same box. And a limited edition codex and in that box. And a limited edition codex in that box. That is cool. So as the hell. price point on that box is gonna be about three bills, you think? Probably Canadian. Well, you know American? what? American. The bills old American? ones were three bills. Yeah. The old ones, I don't know. Are you gonna but the get old more? Ones were metal. And metal had value because yeah. you could scrap it and I sell guess. it as I, I, I don't know if I don't know if that's why. <laughs> the other ones are three bills, but they came with like every new unit too. I guess I guess yeah. we'll see if they do this again. I mean, this is one of those times where like I would really like to see them come back to these all in ones because other other and I guess the reason I'm saying this is other companies do that because they won't do it as like a a battle force sort of thing. Like like they would like there's it'll be splash for sure. It'll be one price. Forces. It'll be one. Oh, remember Apocalypse? That was a thing. <laughs> this whole game they released. Yeah. In remember remember June? remember. I mean, I saw that one was two months ago. Two so, and a half do ago? they need to slow down? I mean, obviously, for their bottom line, they don't want to slow down. No, of course not. They want to. They want to ramp up as much as yeah. possible, as much as the market will. I bear. mean, I guess the question is, how long does it take us to get exhausted? And is the answer never if they get, if they keep finding enough new? Well, customers. there's always somebody who will buy it, right? Like That's if it. I don't buy if they keep it, and you don't customer, buy it, someone's keep, gonna buy it. But if they keep finding new customers, it doesn't matter because those customers, new it. customers, aren't exhausted, right? Yeah. So they just keep piling them in, piling them in. And I, I think that's where they're benefiting from the hype trains in other places, like their mobile games, mm -hmm. their 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 video. How many people came in from Total War Warhammer? Yeah, well, and they're, no, about, so they're, and they're they about to launch off, a new one. They showed off. There's apparently there's a Blood Angel ca cartoon being made. Was a Blood Angel of Horn. Death? Really? Yeah. What? That was that just good in sketch. It was at the very bottom. You had to scroll all the way down. Oh, man. okay. You got you got stuck on boner mancers. I got, you got... <laughs> I got bored about halfway through and stopped. I think I stopped at the Rohan. Yeah, stuff you had last to get night. all the way to the bottom. And there's a Jess Goodwin sketch, which is funny because I'm looking at the Jess Goodwin sketch and I'm like, did he do this in like '97? Because Jess Goodwin's concept sketches have not changed in 30 years the way he does them, and he's glorious. And I will never say a bad word about anything Jess Goodwin has done, except for the fact that he got Space Marines the wrong size on his. Oh, the seven foot, the seven foot, eight foot thing. Yeah, yeah. Where, it, where it start, it's the, the bottom floor started. Is one foot, the floor guys. is one feet tall. That's yeah. right. Yeah, there's that, no, there's no zero in our. That, is a, in that our, is that is a legendary, yeah, but, a legendary um, gaff. But you look at that concept sketch, and it's just it's that it's like that typical like Jess Goodwin pencil on paper, and I love looking at those things. Cause I can pour over them. Every single Jess Goodwin sketchbook that's ever come out, I've bought. Um, because, you know, going back to White Dwarf 127, when I first saw those Aspect Warrior concept yeah. sketches, and I was just like, oh, that's right, that's Yellow Eldar. Book? Was it, what did that get compiled into? Was it Yellow Book? Was it uh, Harlequins that was, the cover? Yeah, that's, that was in the, in the compilation. That's right, book. compilation. Because yeah. the Compendium was right. Compendium, was pre, pre, compendium predated that. That's right. Well, it was, yeah. it was the second one, because I had yeah. the Harlequins in the cover, and that was yeah. when the, the Aspect Warriors and the Harlequins all came out. Yeah. The olden times. Yeah, the olden but days. But yeah, no, I that was the thing I was most excited about, actually, was seeing that one, that one shot, because that's an industry thing that they haven't been doing. That the other other people in the industry have been doing. So like, uh, Infinity has wonderful army boxes that get you. Yeah. Like, you know, the, all the rules. You get your um, two factions, dice, tokens, everything in one box. <laughs> um, but GW does do kind of do that. They do two player battle boxes. So they do two player starters. They do, yeah. And these two player starters are again self contained yeah, games. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, it's true. Right. They do, and they do them on a cycle too, where they and I think that's how we're going to get the boner mancers. I think that's how they're going to so? come out. I think they're going to come out in a Fight box ogres? with ogres. This is the next conspiracy theory. The ogre character it was sort oh, of. Oh, that yeah. might make sense. Yeah, actually. So you take the ogre and you pack a bunch of old ogre models that you can't move anymore because they're old. Right. Ogre. Guys. Nice models, though. They're great models. They're from 2007. But, but, but you need something to make people want to buy gut busters, right? Yeah, that's true. So. If people are going to start ogres right now, they're going to do which the ogre army that has an army book, which is the Beast Claw Raiders, right? Well, if the new book comes out, because the new book is the other one previewed with the Free Cities, wasn't it? Was ogres? It was tri- or tribes? No, it was it was it was the orcs. It was the Wa. Oh, it was tribe. the Wa. Yeah. They're just going to give them the orc treatment. They're going to put so them that's on what the I think. Book. I think it's just yeah, going to Wa tribes. So, but they but they do that is that they will release the two player battle box, Maybe, and yeah. then they're going to release the army book. So the army book will come out the following. Either the next week or the following week, a couple weeks later, you'll get the Boner guys, and then a few months down the road, we'll get the Maw Tribe. That's entirely possible to do a two-player star set. Because that's what they did that with the sense. Carrion. Carrion I thought they were going to do that feast. for Free Cities and Orcs. I thought that's what they might do. I would do love to see Empire play, versus Orcs, because that is just takes Empire, you Is it Empire, though? There's other stuff in there. There's Dwarven. Well, there, but but it's it's Order versus Destruction. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. Order right? versus it's, Mass Destruction of, yeah. of all the Orc Tribes. And and at first I hated the idea of Iron Jaws and Bone Splitters getting, bone splitters getting stuck together. No, I'm kind of warming to the idea. Not that I'm going to add any Bone to, Splitters to, me, to, to my... To me, I like that because they did it with the Skaven. Mm-hmm. They put all the tribes together. And you can always go into one stream. Like that's yeah. I, I don't I would rather have everything finished and then you can pick a path if you want. Yeah, I still, have it, I still have think the Skaven out. book is, is lacking some key models in some ways. Right. Um, I want to see Plastic Gisales. I want Plastic Gisales for... <laughs> it's the only thing holding me back from doing a Skaven Army Games workshop. Get on those Plastic Gisales. <laughs> and Globadiers. Get all your, yeah, plastic, yeah. Uh, your plastic Scryer stuff. Yeah. Because that's what that's the direction I thought they would go yeah. with Skaven and AOS. Because it seems like the natural fit for that high, high fantasy setting is right. you have Ultra Tech Skaven. Um, making their far squeakers, talking to the elder on the radio by accident. Exactly. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the end times when they 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 they, they go they invade Luster, they blow up the moon, all the all the lizardmen just fuck off. They're like, no, nah, this is done. They get their spaceships to fly away, <laughs> and then they find like this old one, like weird piece of tech, and it's basically just a radio. And they accidentally talk to the elders. They're like, ah, they just blow it up because <laughs> they freak out. That was the that was the high point of end times for me was when they accidentally radio the elder. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that the um, I think that the the plans for these releases, the the one positive thing is they do get us theorizing what's coming out. But there's definitely a negative in like I do get distracted from projects by because my oh oh it's funny because Owen just sold his um, his uh, free people army, and then like literally a week later they, they <laughs> spoiled that book and he's like. I got parts. I can do this. And then it kind of was alluded to also that it was going to fold and other things. He's like, yeah. oh, cool. And I can paint cannons. I can paint doors. I can paint other stuff too on top of this. And he got excited about it again because it was something he wasn't super excited about because, I mean, he'd played it out. Basically, he was doing whatever you could do with what was there and what was in General's handbook. Um, and now he's kind of excited about doing a project again. So maybe he'll start building and painting stuff. But it, it is so easy to get distracted because there's... I. I'll be honest, the thing I was most tempted by, so like, if I was to rank just, because we're talking about Nova and it's just this weekend, so we'll talk about it. The thing is I was most to least excited by, it was the, the Necromunda stuff was at the top probably. Then it was. And you really actually, didn't get much for that. I didn't get much for that. It was you the got Rohirrim. a silhouette of a model. Yeah, it was the Rohirrim stuff that I was next up. I was just like, I should paint these models. These are badass. And I have an excuse to paint some more, play some more Lord of the Rings. Which uh, is a great it, game. Then it was Sisters. Because I like the sister yeah. stuff. It looks cool. And I'll, I'll paint a sister's army because they, they'll paint up fast. Black Palmer paints fast. Um, and then it was probably the Bone Tide last. But it was mostly just because like, Undead's never done anything for me. I like fighting against them. I yeah. like the idea of yeah. like, them as an enemy. It's kind of like Tyranids. I, 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 like, I like Manfred. I like Manfred von Karstein. Right. But other than that, uh, yeah. I like Krell and, and I like the sort of that old school Undead. They're one of my favorite say, like, armies. Fifth edition fantasy sort of stuff. Right. They're one of my favorite armies to see across from me because I love the idea of this like endless host of like bad mm-hmm. like, undead dudes marching towards me. And everybody wants to play Army of Darkness, guys. And everyone's well, I mean my name's actually yeah. I can't, I can't not. <laughs> but but the um the the fact that like that the, the, they're a new army doesn't really attract me to build and paint them. I'm I'm excited to play against them. Mm-hmm. I'm not excited to build and paint them. Yeah. Although it looks like as far as undead armies go, they're going to be the elite army, so maybe yeah. you don't have to. Have well, my, my problem with Age of Sigmar is that every time I try to do something that isn't an orc army or a goblin army, <laughs> I quickly lose interest. Because so that, that's great. a whole other hype train <laughs> that's, thing. That's a whole. Well, I was like, oh, I really like these this this corn juggernaut I'm painting, <laughs> but I could be painting 
squig hoppers. Well, the problem is that you have the orc gene. You, yeah. This is so Chris is the, the whole theory behind the orc gene that I have that you guys have heard me talk about before. Chris is actually the exemplar of where whenever he starts a project, if it isn't orcs, at some point it just one eighties and turns basically. Yeah, it, be painting it just orcs. becomes orcs. Why yeah, am I painting yeah. Orcs? <laughs> I just go back to painting orcs, and it's and it's 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 it's, it's like, like coming home. I have a feeling that this mantis warrior army that I'm going to do now. Um, it will just end up me doing buying a box of speed freaks and doing orcs for 40k because, cars instead. because you know like like uh, i had no inch in 40k two weeks ago right and then all of a sudden it's just like a light switch in my head is like oh oh i, I want to paint a space marine oh new space marine codex let me check out this oh <laughs> this is neat oh wait this i can build my own my chapter interest. yeah oh wait yeah, well, why would i build my own chapter when the white scars are so good oh and wait they... who's cool in white scars <laughs> oh i had red corsairs who are the red corsairs oh mantis warriors oh they're kind of like samurais oh yeah okay let's do mantis warriors oh they're green i used to have a green space marine army done and literally two weeks earlier he was sending me constant pictures of the corn blood bat army he's about to yeah. build yeah. <laughs> and like and the space marine marketing kicked off and blam all of a sudden it, it was all space it's time. you know and then well and then there's war cry and it's just so yeah i don't it, it's you almost feel like you're uh but you're done with war cry though i mean i would say done with war cry but like you'd, you'd pan the train you panned your yeah, your your guys I painted and, and you were band. actively playing it at that point yeah. so you were looking for what the next thing your hot yeah. time and that was and, that, was and again on. and it's like it's it's like reality's edge and right. uh, it's i was like well i'm gonna do models for reality's edge and i'm like well you know i have all these hassle-free models that i bought for uh rogue stars right so my rogue stars pirate crew is now my reality edge cyberpunk gang yeah done that's right you know and i I actually ordered a few more hassle free we'll see if they ever show up but well we need to that's our next (laughs) thing we need to work on so we'll do some rogue stars next time you come down um but yeah no i i think it is definitely it no matter how veteran you are in this in this hobby with the current level of marketing being pushed towards you it is really easy to feel that like draw and i can't Mm -hmm. imagine being new to this hobby and not used to that i have no and have it just like tugging you in every direction rationalize what it would be like trying to get into and i don't want to say the games workshop hobby but just getting into the miniature hobby now if i was 13 year old me what would i be into and i don't know if miniatures would be the thing i would be into because would i be into video games i don't like video games (laughs) so if i got into miniatures what would i be doing i'd be building a space marine army guess what i'm doing ash right now i'm building a space marine army well i mean i just think it when you're when you're first when you're i i can't when you first discover this hobby if it's for you that could be a whole episode of like how do you know you're a miniature war gamer um but when you first or even just a tabletop gamer in general when you first discover it you are just trying there's so much now to soak up like when you and i started there wasn't the same even just amount of stuff out there to soak up. So you can kind there of soak up the Dungeons industry. and Dragons. When I first started, there were uh, Ralpartha, right, Ratham, and Citadel. And Citadel were these weird, rare things that came on these wick like, plastic bases, right? Um, from from overseas. I mean, like when I started painting, my first models were were Ratham and Ralpartha Dungeons and Dragons models, right? And you know, I got I got a set of those when I was ten years old, and I remember I got a bunch of testers paints, and those crappy testers paintbrushes, those nylon paintbrushes, it slapped it on, and uh, my mom bought that for me for my tenth birthday. And I think that was her biggest regret because that basically dictated the, the next <laughs> the, the 35 course years of, your life. of my life. Um, was just, uh, you know, uh, I got I got that stuck into painting miniatures. You have the and, gene. You have the gene. And, I, it's, you know, I remember you the, and, and you the first Citadel models I ever bought was a two-pack of orcs. Right. And uh, mine so, that, was the, so that kind of set that path in motion. Right. You know? mine, mine was the, uh, my first Citadel pack ever was one of the hard plastic clamshells. One of those the sliding backs. This one was, this one was a pack, but it was a card and a bag. Bag right. on a blue and white card. Yeah. Mine was a sliding clam pack and it was Empire uh, Knights and Heroes. And it was one Empire Hero, three Reichsguard Knights, and a Wizard. Yeah. It was like five models. And it was the old Citadel hearses, like the really old ones that were huge. Um, and I, I, I also, I testers enameled the shit of those, and they were yep. really terrible. And but, then, and then I saw, then I saw a Space Marine. And then it was. I done. went into the Silver Snail on Queen West back in the day, and uh, there were these blisters on the walls. We had to go that looking. Said Warhammer forty thousand on That's them. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what is this? And <laughs> and there were these like weird like guys with pointy heads, and I thought Eldar at first. I didn't think those were their helmets. You know, those or at least skulls. I thought that their heads inside they're, were that they're shape. They're cone heads. Yeah, it's yeah. that Because I didn't know that they were space elves. <laughs> I didn't have knew. a Warhammer 40,000 book. I just had these miniatures that had shown up out of nowhere. I came in I came in to buy goblins or I, something. I accidentally bought the infantry expansion for Titanicus because it was called Space Marine. And yeah. I thought I was buying a box 
Texas based frames, and I realized they're all six millimeters tall. Well, my I, friend I Nico and I, we 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 bought the the second edition Blood Bowl box, right? Um, With the astrogram pitch. Yeah, and yep. we were like, well, this is this is this is pajamas. interesting. <laughs> Orcs in pajamas. What is and humans this? In pajamas. <laughs> and uh, so we played some Blood Bowl, and uh, yeah. And that, that was, was it. it. Yeah. Well, God, Godspeed to all of you new hobbyists out there who are Good looking luck. at this hobbyist for the first time, because you are you are currently experiencing the highest level of like marketing push that I think I've I've ever I've ever seen in this industry, and I can't imagine what it's like trying to navigate that and be excited about something for more than five minutes. Because yeah. like whatever project you start right now, you're being tempted with like ten other projects within like a week of it being out of the gates. So I think we're going to sign off with that one. A big thanks for Chris coming and hanging out for the podcast and for you folks listening and watching on YouTube and on whatever podcast media you want to check this out on. If you do want to um, add this to your podcast app, for whatever reason, I can't get tech support from Apple Podcasts to list me. Um, but you can just add the RSS feed to your your uh, your actual app. So just click below in the description and it'll add it right to your phone if you're doing this on your phone. Uh, if you're listening to this on, you know, please people that respond to emails like Spotify and... Uh, <laughs> and um pod and all that stuff then uh keep on keeping on so we'll uh, talk to you next time until then i'm ashes chris Apple, <laughs>